you're going to heal faster, right? J joining the military and getting in a certain branch, I learned, what do you mean household cleaners? What do you, you're, in, you're in one of the, the units where, right? If, if there's a place you learn in the world, you know, you got to eat a frog. Where else are you going to, where, I mean, where else are you in the world today or in the United States? Where else are you going to learn in the United States that eating a frog makes your immune system stronger so you can survive the next global plague or pandemic? Nowhere. Uh, you think about that. Where else are you going to learn it? Nowhere. Now you go, does the military actually send people out to do that? Yes. Right? Does the military actually send people out to bite the head off a snake, eat a frog, fucking drink drink swamp water so they have a stronger immune system? Yeah. It's part of the, some of their recruiting pictures and videos on Instagram and Facebook for, for, for different uh, military units are literally men biting the head off of snakes, eating a frog. Why are they doing that? Build their immune system, right? Yeah. Uh, now, you know, ha ha over half the people doing it aren't going to question why they're doing it. They're just going to do it. Right. right? I'm just going to fall in line. I'm going to follow my orders. I'm going to do what I need to do. But like I told you, if you go in with the mindset, free education, well, yeah, I got, I got, I got 40 people here. Everybody's eating a fucking frog. 39 people are going, man, who cares? I ate a frog. Let's go. What's next? You, sir, why am I eating a frog? Go look over here in this information. Yeah. They point you in the direction of, of a resource and you, huh, stronger immune system. Huh. I'll heal faster. You didn't, they didn't tell you that. Like they don't tell you when you're doing it. Right. There's 40 of us there. They're not like, I want you to eat this frog because you're going to have a stronger immune system. You'll heal faster. They don't say that shit. They just, you do it because I told you. Right. But if you, excuse me, sir, can you tell me why? Here, there's there's a book, there's a journal. Go here, go read that. It's free. Yeah. The army paid for that. Now, how much does that journal cost? Right? If you're not in the military, how much would that journal cost you that talks about literally eating frogs, dragonfly snakes to, to boost your immune system, strengthen your memory, and, and and make you heal faster? How much is that journal? It's like fifteen thousand dollars a year. For the, yeah. for, the, for the ones with the least amount of information. Yeah. Who, who's dropping 15 grand to know if they, if they should eat a frog or not? Nobody. But the military does because they get a lot of people that might need to. Does that make right. sense? It's yeah. free education. You don't have the money to buy the journal that's going to tell you that. Right. Not only do you not have the money, you don't have the accreditation or the uh, uh, education, the certificates, the diplomas doctorates, PhDs, for that journal to even give you a copy, right? right. You call them, can I have a copy? <laughs> no, you're nobody. Okay, well, where else can I get one? Well, I know this certain branch of the military has a copy. They use it, They use the information in the field. So if they're using it in the field, they have to have a copy. Right. So I don't, I don't qualify to get one from the source, but I can get an identical copy that the source has from yeah. the military. Make sense? Yeah, it's free education, man. Oh yeah, a lot though. There's a lot. I, I use that as a as a slim thing, but there's a lot of there's a there's a uh, a depth and breadth of information that you can get from the military if you ask questions and pay attention that you will never get anywhere else in the for the rest of your life. Never. Right. Yeah. Never. And it's shit that you're like, well, yeah, I want to. Let me think about this. I want a strong immune system. So I can survive an ex-global plague or pandemic. I want a strong immune system. So if I get shot when I'm out on patrol or I, uh, IED, we drive over an IED, I can heal quicker. I want those benefits. But I would have never known anything about it. I didn't learn anything about it at, at MIT, John Hopkins University, Berkeley, Oxford. None of those places told me anything about it. And right. places that are specifically studying the immune system, they never even told me. But I was given it. I was given it for free because of some dumb shit I wanted to do, or that they were going to have me do. Yeah, makes sense. It does. Yeah. There's so much there, man. So much there. Yeah. Think about, uh, um, uh, you know, quantum mechanics. Right. I want. I want to. I want to get up to speed in quantum mechanics. Da 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 da. Right. Well, 
you know, if you're if you're good in physics and things like that, right? There's there's you know, we're we're working on the, these new new uh, quantum radar. You know, you know, uh, quantum entangling some some particles. Yeah. So when things travel between them, we know instantaneously. We don't actually have to have, uh, you know, the archaic uh, radar systems we have today. Where am I going to get that information? How am I going to get access to that? Can I just call a college and be like, give me all the information on quantum radars? No. But if I go into the military and I actually sign up for the free education they give out with the intent on studying quantum radars and the, and the base information to get into that field. Yeah. Me all that stuff for free, right? Yeah. That half a million dollars worth of information, the military is now shelling out the half a million dollars. I'm getting it for free, right? Does that make sense? It does, yeah. But it, with everything, right? All right, man. Well, hey, uh, I'm gonna let you go. My fiance is losing her mind over here, so uh, <laughs> yeah. see you, man. Take care. Yeah. All right. Can you eat non-endangered? Oh, I mean, they're all endangered of being eaten. I don't think there's a, such thing as a non-endangered frog. <laughs> Sally. I gotta take a link. Full strength vinegar, whatever. Study. Oh, Martin, I am blessed. I am so blessed that you chose me, man. I'm blessed that you even wanted to come on. No, man. I mean, I've been trying to talk to you for so long. So can I ask you what you think about COVID? The virus. Yeah. What do you think about it? I mean. I just told you it's just a, it's a virus. I don't think anything of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you think about, like, the fact that we have so many elderly people who are dying from things like the cold and the flu, and now all of our antibodies for those are gone because we've been wearing masks. I'm not an anti-masker by any means. They're not gone because you've been wearing a mask. Don't, 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 don't I'm start repeating stuff. No, 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 okay. no. But, but no one is prepared for the massive influx of deaths because of the cold and the flu from after COVID is done and dealt with all of our elderly people maybe even some who survived COVID are now going to come down with the cold and the flu, things that do not have well, cure. So, well, now, let me so you now you're, you're, let me ask you a different question. Hold on, hold on. So let me, let me answer that. Hold on, hold on. Let me, what, so you're, what you're not understanding is that the, the, the common, a, a mask doesn't protect you from the flu virus or the common cold or those things. You're still going to be, you're still going to come into contact with the common cold, the flu virus and things like that. Yeah. Right. You're not. So you, whether you wear a mask or not for COVID, you're still you're it's not making you less prepared for the common cold or the flu using bleach, using Lysol, using 409, using household cleaners is what's making you less prepared for the for the cold or the flu. Can I can I ask you, OK, I have a follow up question to that, but I have a side question. You said All you right. eat a frog a week. Well, I, no, I was telling that guy, maybe you need to eat a frog a week. Well, but that's that's a lot of – where do you get your frogs from? My yard? Or somebody brings them to me? So oh, I, I have them in my yard. Guy. I have them in my yard uh -huh. in, in my pool in the back. Um, but if, if – um, when, when that's not available, uh, you know, I just – I make a little video and uh, – Yeah, okay. Uh, do you think um, all of the world's major religions all have it partially correct, but no one has it entirely correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We, we know, we know, I mean, we know all religions are, you know, even Christianity. This is very interesting. You, you, if you go to school to teach Christianity, they, te they tell you this. No religion is 100% correct, but none is 100% wrong. That's very interesting. Right? Yeah. We, tell you, we, we tell you at church, you have to believe in, in our book. It's a hundred percent right, but you go well. What did they teach the leaders who were teaching about the book? It's not a hundred percent correct. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's very interesting. The follow—you're a follower of Christianity. 
you have to take it as 100% correct. If I'm a teacher at, at, the past, at, at your church that's teaching you that it's 100% correct, I was actually taught it's not 100% correct. That's fascinating. Now, why does a pastor or a preacher teach uh, in, that the information they're giving you is 100% correct when they were taught it's not? Retention. Right? I want to I retain you in my congregation. Right? I need you to come every Sunday. I need you to donate money. I, without you and without the retention of you, of you, I don't have anything to pay my electric bill. I don't have anything to keep my lights on. Right? But how can people really know anything about religion if we thought the world was flat for thousands of years? If we thought they didn't think the world was flat for thousands of years, they didn't think the world was flat. Some people did. The church. But, I mean, you think about this right now. They tell you. Think about how Chris, interesting this is. People tell you today, we know the Earth is flat because the Romans have flat pictures of the Earth. And you go, well, yeah, but you re you read the you see the picture of flat Earth, their picture because it's on a flat sheet of paper, and then yeah, underneath it, yeah. and then underneath it, it goes uh, for our viaduct to carry water across the continent. Yeah, we discovered there's a curvature and water flows yeah. backwards. Of okay, course. so I mean, hot air hold, hold on, so you think about it. So they, they tell you, right. you're, you're you're telling me, uh, how do we know this when they thought the world was was flat? They didn't think the world was flat. Just people who are reading the the book like you were. Going, hey, look, they got a picture of flat Earth. I might have gotten that wrong. Uh, not, I didn't mean to say flat Earth. I meant more geocentric. You know, the Earth is the center of the universe. People thought that was the case for a long, long time. And then eventually Galileo came around and started spitting facts, and they shut him down, and it took hundreds of years for him to be recognized as being correct. You know, and I feel like so many things that we think and perceive that are true now are just wrong because we are not – either developed in enough or we do not have the resources to figure that out enough but you know like how how can you be true how can you be certain about anything as either martin cabello or the human race well, not, well here's the thing you can be certain about some things so right and it comes down to actually am i going to take the time to to believe the version uh, somebody's telling me in religion about religion as face value. I'm just going to, it's facts, right? They telling me the light of the world sacrificed itself on a cross to give me my daily bread or, 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 or create all plants on earth. Yeah. Right. And they tell me today that light of the world was Jesus Christ. It was a person, a person. Now yeah. I can take that at face value or I can go, Hmm, my pastor's telling me it's Jesus Christ. The last 150 years or so in Christianity, they're telling me it's Jesus Christ. But yeah. 200 years ago, they actually said, no, the light of the world sacrifices itself on a cross. Now, so is that why you tell people that they need to find it themselves? You're not necessarily yeah. the savior. Okay, I see. Okay. But yeah, you, are you you're worried that people are going to come to different conclusions? No, here's the thing, though. You can't. It, it's a. It's it's a body of light, and it teaches one perspective on anything you want to ask it, right? You can we can we can we can out we get a thousand people ask it the uh, the same question, or study it for the same subject, and they get the same outcome. That's very fascinating. Yeah. So, right. So, so what is the people, best? Part? I'm sorry. Uh, I just uh, want you. You said if you ask different questions to the to the light of the world, you will get different answers, but you never really give your followers are the questions to ask. You kind of give them what, the information to ask the questions and then find the information on their own. I'm not, I'm not trying to attack. No, 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 but, but should, should I, shouldn't you be, shouldn't you have your own questions? I mean, how do you know you have questions until they're challenged? Well, a question isn't anything challenged. A question is, I'm not sure. I don't know something. It's not that I'm being challenged. It's something I don't know. I'm gathering information. So what I'm doing what I'm doing is saying, hey, you want to ask the actual Jesus, the actual Yahweh, the actual Native American Great Spirit, the actual seven colored rainbow body in Buddhism, the actual God, Son of God, Messenger of God, the singularity and birth of every religion's reality. You want to ask the real one. Yeah. I will teach you. Right? I'm the way, I'm the path. Right? I turn water into wine. Huh. The sun in the sky does that. It's pointing yeah. me in the direction to find. The, the teacher at the top. Huh. I turn water into wine. The sun in the sky does that. Huh. So it's really I, 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 hold on. I cure, I cure lepers. I cure lepers. 
You study. Yeah. Well, Jesus Christ doesn't cure lepers. The sun in the sky does that. So the sun in the sky turns water into wine. The sun in the sky cures leper. Right? I take five loaves of bread and two fish, and I feed 5,000 people. And you go, well, right? It, when they wrote the Bible, that's exactly what, they, what they, 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 they did. They took five loaves of bread and two fish, and they stuck it in a bucket out under the sun, and it would ferment. And then they mixed it with clay and threw it in the ocean. And it attracted so many fish, you could feed 5,000 people and use their guts as fertilizer for your wheat field to feed another 5,000 people wheat. I've never heard, wow, I've never heard you say that. I've never go, okay, so the, you go, the sun in the sky does that. Huh, sure. the sun in the sky turns water into wine, it cures a leper. It does the five loaves of bread and two fish to 5,000 people. It leaves so, the visible footprints on a beach. So related it to walks that, on water. What is, do you think that there is a creation myth? Do you think we were spontaneously made in Earth's atmosphere and our ancestors were bacteria? Do you think that organism we know, we know you are what is your what are your mitochondria what fuels you what what takes your the food powerhouse of the cell what, what is that bacteria i mean literally we know you came from a single-celled organism you still use that single-celled organism to fuel you it was so efficient the single-celled organism that you came from was so efficient at creating energy it's one of the last things we have from the beginning where would your hair come from it's an adaption right that single-celled organism adapted my hair to live in a certain environment. My yeah. skin, yeah. My, that single cell organism adapted my skin to live in a certain environment. Our lungs to breathe. Right. My eyes, I evolved so I could see things in an environment. But the powerhouse of my cells, my mitochondria, where did I get that from? The beginning. It's what gave me the, the it was, it's what, what gave me the ability or the energy I needed to grow hair in the new environment to grow skin in the new environment, to grow eyes in the new environment, to have nose in the new environment. That's very interesting. So we evolved based on, based on where our ancestors have, have grown up. That's why there's differences in race and all of that. You, you're, yeah. you're a proponent of, okay. Okay. Uh, by the way, off, I mean, unrelated. You, unrelated. You think about, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just curious. Where is your accent from? I've, I've been listening to your voice for like a year now. I have, are you from Texas? I don't, ha I don't know if I, I don't, ever, I didn't even know I had one. So, <laughs> so oh, I mean, I have one, but you know, I can't tell. Are you from uh, Oregon originally or Washington? I'm, I'm from earth. <laughs> no, I tell people, you know, I, I fell, I, 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 I fell out of heaven and had my body forged out of stardust to, to hold my consciousness. Wow. That's deep, bro. In real life, in real life. You think about crazy this is yeah. for the most advanced information. Humanity has in science and religion. I came from this kingdom that exists in the light, right? Religions call that kingdom God. You came from the light, right? In all religions. Yeah. In science, though, in science, I've been scientifically, I came from this quantum holographic universe. Where does that exist? In the light. Science has proven what religion stated. I came from the light. I felt literally, I came from the kingdom of heaven that Israel light and not of this earth. And my body was forged out of stardust so I could sit here and talk to you. And hopefully, hopefully, I won't, I won't have to come back again. So I've noticed you, you kind of, you do that a lot where you kind of are able to unpack and find more truth in common sayings. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that's on purpose? Do you think that is some higher power trying to hide, hide hidden information in plain sight? Do you, do you think that is that your way of conveying information easier to your followers? Um, like, it's, 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 it's how, how uh, religions hide information, intelligence agencies hide information, militaries hide. It's how the top of the world hides information and, 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 and shares information. The okay. Divine C Code, the Da Vinci Code. What are the What was the Da Vinci Code? Isn't that it, Isn't that about the guy? He had a bunch of books, and what he would do is take a random book and flip between a different pages and pick out words, and he was able to formulate sentences and tell the future through that. Well, not tell the future. Give you the most advanced information in science. Now, this is interesting. In 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 Abrahamic religions. Right? 
a child of God is an Israelite. Right? Yeah. In Abrahamic religions. Sure. A child of God is an Israelite. Yes. And with the divine C code in science, studying that, we've scientifically proven your body, your mass, is real light. It was created when the light of the world sacrificed itself on a crossover from energy into matter that is your daily bread and your last supper. And when you ate that daily bread and last supper, your digestive system broke it back down into light to build you. Your body, your mass, Israelite, you're fucking Israelite per science. You are a true Israelite per the most advanced information in science. And how do we get that information? To be the most advanced in science. The Da Vinci Code. Yeah. Now you go, oh, that's interesting. The most advanced information in quantum mechanic, quantum field theory, and how I'm created comes from code out of the out of Abrahamic religions, Israelite. My matter Israelite. Physics right there. Huh. Why is it only Abraham? Adam and Eve? Right in the divine C code. Hold on. The, the divine C code. When your father's Adams from his serpent or sperm merges and takes a bite out of your mother's egg, the forbidden fruit, at the eve of your creation. It creates a spark of light that is real light, a real life halo that falls down from the kingdom of heaven that is real light and not of this earth to transfer that consciousness into a newly created biological 666 carbon vessel. You go, what? How do they get that most advanced information? In, in It's the most advanced inf information in human reproduction and, and fertility today. That's how you make babies. It's how a human life is created. How do we get that? The divine C code. One Algorithm, one cipher, one freaking cipher has given humanity. That's like DNA? Are, hmm? are you referencing DNA? That, that genetic code is that, that humans are given through, that's sent through the ser serpent or sperm? No, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking about this. What, what, are you, what are you made out of? Not, light. Uh, light, yeah. Now, now, we tell you you came from Adam in religions. Right, you came from Adam and Eve. Adam, what what is Eve? Well, now we're going to get somewhere. You came from Adam and Eve. Okay. Now, in the divine C code, using that divine C code, re reading the original Adam and Eve story, you came from your father's Adams. Most advanced information in science. You came from Adam, and your mother's Adams, and you got here at the eve of the, of their merging, Adam and Eve. When the atoms for your mom and your dad merged at the eve of that merger, you got here. The most advanced information in, in human creation, literally, there's a cipher. You go, well, this cipher does computer science. Literally, the most advanced information in computer science. I use this one cipher, this one code, and I get the most advanced information in in is healing that, the human body. Code, what you just said, you came from your. your no, no, dad. no. Study what a cipher and code is. You're you're jumping ahead. But I mean, think about that. There really is a Da Vinci code, a divine C code, and if you know it, you get the most advanced information that colleges are charging you hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to learn, and we call it science, right? You, you can pay. You can pay three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Go to MIT. And we're going to teach you how your body, your well, matter, you is stuff, your life. All you're paying for is the degree in the end. You can learn. But listen to what I'm saying. For $350,000, you're going to learn your body, your matter, is real life. Or there's a code. There's an actual code. There's an actual anagram, some actual ciphers that will give me all of that information that every college is teaching for free. And all I need is a Torah, a Bible, and a Quran. I need a Torah, a Bible, and a Quran, and a cipher? That's weird. That the most advanced weird. information in computer science, out of the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. Quantum mechanics, Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. Human biology, Torah, the Bible, and the so, Quran. Botany and horticulture, Torah, the Bible, Bible, and the Quran. Three books, or do, do you need all three books? That's, that's my, I couldn't my question. Uh, can you extrapolate all of the information through one book or do you need all three books to you need all the, three books the four you have to have all three why not why not like the the book of uh like the mormon bible or why why only the three because they, they didn't they, they didn't get it correct not to be rude but i mean i mean 
Anything about this? Well, uh, Martin, you, know, you just said hold, that all religions... I'm going to help you. Hold on. Okay. Let me finish. All right. So, Sorry. Where, how did the Mormon Bible come around? Come about? Uh, 1800s. But how? Who wrote uh, it? John Smith, you know. How? How? Some golden plates fell out of the sky. Yeah. Right? That well, nobody could see. Hold on. Hold on. Stop. Yeah, you know, Stop. Was... Stop. Stop. Stop cutting me off. So All right, I'm sorry. the Mormon Bible, some golden plates fell out of the sky. But we know today in real life, golden plates will allow you to see the original body of light that gave us the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran. All Joseph Smith did was uh, extrapolate some of the information, and he understood, hey, a sun disk, golden plates, a tabernacle, golden plates. I'm going to create a new version and say golden plates fell out of the sky so I could do so. I'm not going to show anybody the golden plates because I'm not telling the truth. So he's a poser? It, not to be mean or nothing, but yeah, he lied. What about, do you know what the Bhagdava uh, Gita is? Yep. So that came before any, uh, I, I think, I might not be before the earliest Jews, but it definitely came before Christianity and, and Islam. Kind of. So, the ver so it came before the name Christianity. So... Now, you think about it, uh, the, the, in, in Hinduism and, and, and it, things like that, um, you still need a sun disk to see the body of light in their religion. So you're talking about another religion, but you still need a sun disk. You need a, a device to see something in the exact same place as every other religion. You need the same device to see the exact same thing in every other religion. So the, I can't say the name. I have an enunciation problem, so whatever. But the body, blah, 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 blah. I need a sun disk to see the body of light that is the gods from there. Huh. And where do I see them? I have to line it up with a cloud in the sun so it refracts the light so I can see this body of light standing behind the sun. Huh. Well, in Christianity, what do I need to see Jesus Christ? A tabernacle. I mean a monstros. And I got to line it up with a cloud in the sun so I can see this body of light behind the sun. And Yahweh, the same thing. Native American. You see what I'm saying? They're all the same thing. Well, isn't Christianity more about, you know, you have to bless the bread to be able to consume the body of Christ? And isn't the No, they, they don't tell the truth. They don't tell the truth anymore. In Christianity, originally, that, that bread and that body of Christ that you're talking about, bless the bread stuff, that's all you could have for seven days? That you had periods of time throughout the year for seven days. All you could have was that little piece of bread, little swig of, of wine, and some, and some water. For, what did they do? That was fasting, right? Well, that's called Ramadan in Hinduism, Ramadan in Islam. It's, it's fasting. But, I mean, it does heal you. Well, the problem was people started going, whether I believe in Jesus Christ or not, just eating this small piece of bread and, and a little swig of wine for seven days healed me. I believe in Jesus, and it healed me. But these 50 people over here who don't believe in Jesus, they believe in the, 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 the God of rock, they got healed too. So then Christianity went, no more, no more teaching people that practice. There's all kinds of people being healed of diseases and illnesses, whether they believe in Jesus or not. And we only want people who believe in Jesus to be healed. And that's, that's, that's not the cool part. Literally, we don't, you, don't do, you don't take the, the bread and body of Christ once, once a day for seven days anymore like you were originally supposed to because it cures non-believers. And if it cures non-believers... You'll never get them. They'll never be a believer, right? Why do I got to believe in your God? Right. The, eating this piece of bread and this wine and drinking water for seven days cured me. I didn't need to believe in your God for a cure. I didn't need to. I didn't need to believe in your God to be healthy. I didn't need to yeah. believe in your God for that miracle or that blessing. So they were. They went. Ah, 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 ah. It's it's helping non-believers and believers. Get rid of it. Let's change the way we do it. We'll turn it to a once. A, a month thing, once every other month, once a week thing. C remove the fasting from it. We, they've literally, you read the whole thing originally, though. It was something they practiced for a week. And it cured non believers and believers equally. You did not have to believe in Christianity for it to work. And Christianity went, well, I don't like all, I don't like all these people who believe in something else getting healed too. Let's no longer practice this. Let's no longer teach this. And so does everybody do that? All religions? I mean, if you say that, 
every religion is partially correct and you know humans well, now let's get to Mark. how does how does how does allah heal you in islam you have to stop eating fruits and veggies fast for ramadan well how does yahweh heal you in judaism you have to stop eating fruits and veggies and fast you go into ketosis so judaism and islam same thing well how about buddhism well, I got to stop eating fruits and vegetables, sugar. I got to fast, go into ketosis, and the seven called rainbow body and Buddhism can heal me. But you know what? There's this Native American great spirit. I don't need to believe in those other gods. The Native American great spirit, if I don't eat fruits and vegetables, sugar, and I fast, go into ketosis, great spirit will heal me. Hmm. Uh, okay. But I'm waiting for it, 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 think about this now, in Hinduism, right? Yeah. If I don't eat fruits and vegetables, sugar, and I fast, Rama, Krishna, and the Hindu gods will heal me. Huh. Well, hey, wait a minute, though. In Egyptian culture, if I fast, I don't eat fruits and vegetables, any forms of sugar, the Egyptian gods will heal me if I use ketosis. Huh. Huh. The Babylonian, the Sumerian, the freaking Greek gods. How do I, if I want the Greek gods to heal me, what do I have to do? I mean, read it. Greek gods, I have, to, I, have to, I have to give them an offering. Yeah. But then after I give them the offering, I have to not eat while that offering is being eaten by the gods. Well, that's the thing with Judaism too, though. While they still had the third temple, they had priests who would sacrifice animals almost every day. But since then, they haven't sacrificed for 2,000 years. and People still believe in Judaism. And I mean, it seems to work for some people. Well, yeah, here's the thing, though. It's, 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 everybody has a different level of intelligence, and everybody needs a, a different level of information. Some people are content never finding the whole truth. Some people are only content when they find the whole truth. Some people are content on 10%, 20%, different levels. There's okay. different levels. They all point the same place. They all show you the same thing. They all use ketosis, right? They all point to one place. They just don't tell you that. Would Christianity ever tell you? You know, you're going to see God. We're, you know where we tell you in Christianity to see Jesus? That's where Judaism tells you you can see Yahweh. Same, same place. They don't tell you that because they want you to think it's different. When have you ever heard Islam? The messengers of Islam are seen in the bow of a cloud. Same place you see Judaisms and Christianities. You know, when have you ever heard, heard Buddhism? The seven called rainbow body in Buddhism? Same place you see Jesus. Hmm. The, the Greek gods, Mount Olympus. In the bow of a cloud. Well, that's weird. I have to see the Greek gods. I got to look to where Judaism tells me to see Yahweh. But I also have to look where Islam tells me to see their messengers. I, exactly where Christianity says Jesus. In order to see the Greek gods, I got to find Jesus. In order to find Jesus, I got to find the Greek gods. In order to find the God, messenger of God, or son of God in any religion, I have to find the rest of them. One doesn't come without the other. The Alpha and the Omega. The, the first and the last. Yeah. But now so, we're getting so speaking I have to find the, the Alpha and the Omega because they're all the same. I have to go, though. All right. All right, man. I appreciate God it. God bless. So no problem. God bless. You have a wonderful day, sir.